In this video, we want to solve the, the trigonometric equation sine theta minus cosine theta equals 1. We want to do this on the domain 0 to 2 pi. So clearly, we want to solve the problem for radians here. Now, how are we going to go about doing this? The We're going to have to use some identities, but the identity we're going to use is not obvious at the beginning of the problem here. Because you'll notice that the angles are just theta in play here. So since it's just theta, no angle sum, angle difference, half angle, double angle, those identities don't seem to make any sense here. Uh, you might try to do like a, could I do like a sum to product or difference to product type identity, but those really only work when you have a sine and a sine and a cosine and a cosine. Since we have a mismatch here, what do you do here? Well, the key is we want to use the Pythagorean identity, but it's not obvious how we use the Pythagorean identity yet. So that's going to be our first approach on this problem. How do we solve this using the Pythagorean identity? So the first thing we're going to do is we want to isolate one of the trigonometric functions. Because what I, what really what I want you to think of here is that sine and cosine, sine and cosine, these things kind of act like uh, square roots, right? They kind of act like the square root of something because after all, uh, by the Pythagorean relationship, if you solve for sine, you end up with the square root of 1 minus cosine squared. Or if you solve for cosine, you end up with the square root of 1 minus sine squared. So they kind of behave like square roots. And this we see this a lot. Like sine theta can equal root 2 over 2. It can equal root 3 over 2, just as some examples, right, for specific angles. So because of this reason, we, we can kind of pretend like trigonometric functions sine and cosine are like square roots. So if you had the equation, the square root of x minus the square root of x plus one, and this was equal to one, the strategy you would employ would be isolate one of the radicals, like so, and then you square both sides, foil it out, you get an x on the left-hand side, notice how the square root disappeared. On the right-hand side, you do have to foil it out. You end up with one plus two times the square root of x plus one, and then you end up with an x plus one. You can combine some like terms. Notice how the x's cancel from both sides. And so you end up with something like negative two um, is equal to is equal to two times the square root of x plus one, and you can keep on going from there. That's the idea here. We want to separate the trig function, square things, foil things out if necessary, and then go from there. You'll notice that this equation actually has no solution because uh, it's negative equal to a positive, but that's beside the point. It's the technique that matters here. Uh, we want to think about this in terms of sine and cosine. If we pretend those are square roots, then we would isolate one of the radicals on the left. And then you're going to have 1 plus cosine on the other side. So the way to solve these radical equations in algebra is the same way you do it in government, right? If you have a bunch of radicals, the idea is to isolate the radicals and take them out secretly, but when they're by themselves. Uh, so we, we get sine by itself. We're going to square the left-hand side. We have to do the same thing to the right-hand side. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Now, on the left-hand side, of course, we just have a sine squared theta. Um, on the right-hand side, we do have to foil things out. So we end up with 1 plus... We're going to get 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta like so. And so now we want to try to combine like terms in some regard. Like how in the world are we going to do that? Well, this is the point of squaring things. Uh, and this is where the Pythagorean equation comes into play. Notice we have a cosine theta right here and we have a cosine squared. But we have the sine squared here. If we could combine sine squared and cosine together, sine squared and cosine squared, sine squared plus cosine squared would be one. If we could do that, that'd be great. But there's are opposite sides of the equation. If we try to move one to the other side, we're gonna get a minus. And that's that's the, that's the double angle identity. It's not the Pythagorean identity. So instead what we're gonna do is just starting with our Pythagorean identity, cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. Notice if you solve for sine squared, you end up with one minus cosine squared theta, for which you're gonna substitute that in for sine squared, in which case, it's the sine squared is now gone and it's just a cosine. Uh, so we end up with one minus cosine squared theta is equal to one plus two cosine, two cosine plus cosine squared theta. And so now we're gonna combine like terms, set the left-hand side equal to zero, minus one, minus one. So those actually are gonna cancel. Uh, we're gonna add cosine squared theta to both sides, add cosine squared theta. And so we end up with, on the left-hand side, I'm, I'm going to swap the sides. So we're going to have 2 cosine squared theta. Uh, we're going to have 2 cosine theta. This equals 0. The constant term disappears, so that makes factoring a lot easier. On the left-hand side, let's recognize the common, the greatest common divisor between them. We can take out the factor of 2. We can also take out a cosine. And so we take out 2 cosine theta. That leaves behind a cosine theta plus 1 equal to 0. 
So we set each of these factors equal to zero and go from there. What happens if two cosine theta equals zero? Well, if two cosine theta equals zero, divide by two, you get cosine theta, cosine theta, theta equals zero. Well, think about the unit circle. One is the x coordinate zero, well, when you're on the y axis, that'll happen at the top of the unit circle, pi halves, and it happens at the bottom, three pi halves. Uh, we're solving this one in radians, of course. Uh, what about the other one then? Cosine theta plus one. Well, if cosine theta plus one equals zero, we get that cosine theta is equal to negative one. So when is the x coordinate of the unit circle equal to negative one? When you're on the far left of the unit circle, uh, that happens at the angle pi. So theta equals pi in that situation. So putting our solutions together, we get that theta can equal pi halves, comma, pi, comma, three pi halves, like so. And so we were able to solve this equation. Remember, we were trying to solve the equation sine theta minus cosine theta equals one on one rotation of this unit circle from zero to two pi. And how did we do this? Well, the idea is we treated the trigonometric function sine and cosine like they were radicals. Uh, we squared things. Um, now with regular radicals, square roots, the square would make them go away. For the trigonometric functions, we have to utilize the Pythagorean identity to get rid of them. And so we have to utilize the Pythagorean identity to simplify this and make it into a quadratic equation. But in order to do that, we had to square things to create it. But this, this causes a potential problem for us here. Um, going back to the idea of solving a radical equation, if you have an equation like the following, say, x equals 1, if you square both sides, you get x squared equals 1 squared, which equals... Well, x squared equals 1, right? Uh, but there's actually two solutions to this equation, right? This, this equation right here has the solution x equals 1 and negative 1. But the original equation just had, just had an x equals 1 there. So when you square both sides of an equation, the thing is you could introduce solutions that are actually not authentic solutions. I like to think of these as party crashers. Uh, party crashers, meaning that someone was invited to the party and some was not. Who has an invitation, right? We have to investigate this. This is honestly good practice to do on any equation. Check your solution. But when it comes to equations involving squaring both sides, you have these potential party crashers, it's essential that we check these. So let's try these solutions. Pi halves, pi, three pi halves to see who's the right one or who's not, right? So if we were to try pi halves, Try that one for a second. Uh, theta equals pi halves. So we're going to take sine of pi halves minus cosine of pi halves, like so. Sine of pi halves, that's equal to 1. Cosine of pi halves is 0. That equals 1, which is the right-hand side. So pi halves checks out. Pi halves has an invitation. Um, what about pi? Theta equals pi. Well, if theta equals pi, you're going to take sine of pi you're going to get minus cosine of pi. Sine of pi is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So you get a double negative, which is 1. That checks out too. Just because 1 works out doesn't mean 1 doesn't or anything like that. So you, we do need to check all of these ones. What about 3 pi halves here? Well, if you take sine of 3 pi halves minus cosine of 3 pi halves, in that situation, well, sine of 3 pi halves, that's going to be a negative 1. Cosine of three pi halves is zero. So you get a negative one that does not equal one. So aha, three pi halves is a party crasher. Three pi halves has to go to party jail um, for, for intrusion right now. So we have to remove three pi halves. This is a very common mistake that students often see is that they did everything right to get pi halves, pi, and three pi halves. But if you don't check your solution, you won't see why three pi halves didn't work, right? You have to check your solution whenever you square both sides. And that's what makes this problem a lot more advanced is that when you square both sides, it introduces these potentially incorrect solutions. Um, so we have to check our answers when we're done. Again, that's good practice for every equation you try to solve, but it's critical for this one right here. So it turns out the actual solutions are theta equals pi halves and pi. Three pi halves needs to be removed.